Hey y'all and welcome back to the channel or if it is your first time here, welcome especially. I'm Sally and it means a lot that you've stopped by. Today I am making a pro-metabolic meal prep video but we're calling it a shred edition. If you saw last week's video, my husband and I are currently doing kind of a 12 week shred. I say that tongue in cheek. We are not going to get super lean but we are trying to lean out a little bit for some goals that we have individually. If you want to know why, check out that video. Um, but these recipes are for anybody. It is just a structure of prepping food for the week that has been working really well for me. Um, for as long as I can remember, what I have done is just made dinner every night and made enough so that there are leftovers for the next day, which is great. That works really well. Um, but as days have gotten a little bit busier and my mind has just been a little bit more chaotic, it's been really helpful for me to portion out and prep a bunch of meals at the start of the week so that I don't have to think about it every single night. Um, and then on nights that I do want to take the time to make a more elaborate meal, I really have the mental space and creativity to do that. So that's what's going to happen. Um, I'm going to show you, I've made a list of all of the meals that I am prepping and of all of the main objectives that I need to accomplish. And I've gotten started on a few things. So I'm going to show you. Thanks for being here. Come along. As I said, I've written out everything on a sheet of paper that we're going to be doing today. We are making Korean beef bowls with rice and broccoli, pork chops with sweet potatoes and garlic kale. I'm making a chicken and green bean casserole. And then we're doing raw carrot salad with shredded chicken and sourdough. Now these two are going to be more portioned out and these are going to be more batch style but here's a list of everything I need to do I've actually already cooked my rice in the instant pot and you're trying to write left-handed um, but we're gonna cook chicken take care of the pork raw carrot salad you can look at the whole thing I won't read it out but as for the rice I've gone ahead and portioned this out I just cooked it in my instant pot each of these containers has about a cup of steamed rice and then I had about a half cup extra so <laughs> we're using an old Talenti container but these are some really nice they're 32 ounce meal prep containers that are glass that I got on Amazon and I will link them below I really like them so what we're gonna do now is chop up some broccoli and steam the broccoli and we're gonna cook our beef to go with the rice. I find it works best to get as much prepped and laid out ahead of time as possible. So I've gone ahead and washed all my broccoli. There's a ton of it here. It is ready to be chopped and put in the steamer basket. I've washed all my sweet potatoes. And then now in the Instant Pot is my chicken. This is a hack that's been working so well for me. You can use whatever form of chicken you want. Um, but I just have some chicken breasts here because my husband prefers them and because you can get them for relatively cheap but all I've done is thrown them still mostly frozen into the instant pot. I've added just a drizzle of olive oil, some kosher salt, and then we have some poultry seasoning which this works really well. Just a combination of different herbs if it'll focus but you can also throw in some rosemary, fresher, dried, thyme. I've done that, pepper, garlic powder. That all works really well. But what I'm going to do now is get this going by putting the lid on it and I'll probably have to do that my coffee. Here. We'll see. Am I skilled enough? Okay, I am. There we go. Um, put the lid on there and then we're going to hit the meat button and I'm going to take it since it's still frozen up to about 50 minutes, which might be overkill, but we'll get some nice tender chicken. I just let it cook like this a whole bunch of it. I think I have like two and a half pounds in here right now. And then after that, we'll make sure it is tender enough. I'm gonna shred it. Some of that's gonna go into our casserole. And then I'm also just gonna save some of that that's gonna go with the raw carrot salad. On this side of the kitchen, I have my oven preheating to about 400 degrees for my sweet potatoes. I've got three pounds of ground beef that I've gone ahead and thawed. It's gonna go into this pan for my Korean style beef. And this is just a sheet pan right here waiting for my sweet potatoes. started on our ground beef and something I usually do when it comes to ground beef almost every week is I add in about eight ounces of liver to the total volume I cook so that Samuel and I can get four ounces of liver in per week and this has been working really well for us if you want a full video on how I do that let me know in short I soak the liver in milk to get rid of some of the harsh flavor then I add in um, or I, I rinse it off and I throw it into the food processor I grind it up uh, so it creates kind of a paste and I mix that in 
into my beef as it's cooking. That being said, um, this week we actually picked up some lamb liver at the farmer's market, which I think one of y'all actually recommended to me. And I ended up just coming across it that same week, which was crazy. And we've heard this is a lot milder. So I am going to try just cooking this up later in the week on its own. I'm a little bit nervous. Samuel's all for it. So I'm trying to adapt that same attitude, but um, that's why we're not adding it into the beef. But that is a really good hack. And if you wanna know how to do it again, just comment below and I can make a short video focused on that method. Now that our beef is drained, we're gonna go ahead and add our seasonings. I'm doing about a third of a cup of soy sauce. Um, I'm running a little low, otherwise I might add a little bit more than this, but I also have gone ahead and salted the beef. I've got right here about 50 grams of brown sugar. You can use maple syrup too, that's honestly pretty good as well. I don't measure these, but I add a generous squirt of sriracha. We're gonna do about a tablespoon of fish sauce. Fish sauce is incredibly umami. It smells awful on its own, I won't lie to you, but it adds a real depth of flavor to anything you put it in. And then a generous sprinkle of garlic powder as well. Oh, that was a little more than intended. That's embarrassing, but that's okay. It's still gonna be good. Garlic is fantastic. <laughs> We're gonna stir this all up and then um, I'm gonna add in some lime juice towards the end and I'm gonna try and dig some ginger also out of my cupboard. You can add some dried ginger. You can totally add fresh garlic and ginger to that as well, to this as well. It's really good. <music> anything like this beef where I am just throwing my own recipe together I just jot down all of the ingredients and then I input anything calorically significant into my fitness pal with the total volume of the beef and then I divide it by grams so I can partition this out in however many gram servings that I would like and we can easily input the serving size and the macros via my fitness pal Broccoli is all packaged up. I have four here. Samuel's already eating one over there, but I like to just put a piece of masking tape on it and I've written out all the macros that I got by just inputting the recipes into my fitness pal. And then right here I have a massive pork loin that we picked up from Costco. Great way to save money is to grab a huge pork loin, slice it up into chops, and then you can cook some every week. So I'm going to cook some for this week. Chicken is finished and just waiting for me in the instant pot. And then over here, I've got some garlicky kale going. I just smashed a few cloves of garlic, sauteed it in olive oil, and I've thrown on my dinosaur kale, which is my personal favorite. I'm gonna make sure to cook it thoroughly so it's easy to digest. And then our sweet potatoes are just out of the oven over here. This is by no means the most glamorous way to do pork chops, but I'm keeping it really simple. I just do a tiny drizzle of olive oil. I'm gonna sprinkle it with some kosher salt right here. And then I'm just using this Ajika Georgian seasoning blend, which my mom introduced me to, and we're obsessed with it. I love putting it on pork and chicken and um, even on roasted vegetables to curry them really quickly. It's not spicy or anything, so sometimes we'll add a little spice after the fact, but it's really, really flavorful. And I think it goes well with pork especially. So I'm just gonna throw this in the oven. It's at about 400 for probably 18 to 20 minutes to make sure everything's cooked thoroughly. And then ultimately, I'm just gonna chop it up and throw it with the sweet potatoes and the kale. There are ways to do it to get the pork a little bit more seared on either side. I suppose doing it in a pan would definitely get that result for you, but being a little bit, a little bit lazy with this today and most days, honestly, when I do the pork chops. 
Our chicken has just finished up and here's what it's looking like. Very tender, just pulls apart super easily. So I'm gonna pull this out, roughly shred it, and then part of it is gonna go into the fridge just as is. I'll have it with raw carrot salad throughout the week and then sourdough. I'm gonna make the sourdough tomorrow so it's not gonna be included in this video, but uh, if you want to check out my process for that, I can link my sourdough video below. And then again, part of this is gonna go into our green bean and chicken casserole. We are in the home stretch, ladies and gentlemen, with just two more items to knock off our to-do list. On this side of the room, I have sauteed 10 ounces of mushrooms in about 10 grams of olive oil. This is for our chicken and green bean casserole. I have 24 ounces of our shredded chicken from earlier. I've got one package of these French green beans from Trader Joe's. You can absolutely use canned green beans. I think that would be really tasty. This is after all, just like a Thanksgiving green bean casserole, but with green beans in it. And I think personally canned green beans are the best in that context, but this is a condensed portobello mushroom soup uh, from Trader Joe's. I'm gonna do one of these and I'm gonna do equal parts water. And then just some seasoning, I'll use some onion salt, some garlic powder, some salt on its own. And over here, I've got three ounces of Parmesan, which is also gonna go into that. I can link this full recipe or rather type it out in the description box. Everyone cross your fingers that I remembered, but it has been a hit. I made it last week and uh, it feeds a crowd. You just need to add carbohydrates to the side because there really are not very many at all included, but we had it with baked potatoes last week and are doing it again this week as my family is coming into town. And then for our carrot salad, I have got, um, this is 400 grams of carrots. We have 15 grams of melted coconut oil, 15 grams of our apple cider vinegar, and then it'll just be salt to taste. I'm gonna shred these in the food processor. That's been the easiest way for me to do it. And I'm finding that about 400 grams of carrots is enough for me to have it throughout the week um, without having too much that then goes bad. And if I need to make more, I will, but it's just really helpful to have it on hand because to be honest, I will not eat it if it's not there already prepared for me. 